He is the creative director of awesomeness for the Imagination Agency. Uh, and he is Martellus Bennett, along with his book, Hey, AJ, It's Bedtime. Good to see you, sir. Nice to see you as well. Do I need to hold, push this up? Or? No, no, you're fine right there. Okay. There might, I think your voice is I counting. feel like Ricky Bobby when he didn't know what to do with his hands. <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> just just sit there. And, All right. Is, is it, I have to turn to my, I guess, He's my, uh, my creative perfect. director of awesomeness of sound. He's fine? Perfect. Yeah. Okay. You're good. Oh, good. How you doing? I'm excellent. Yeah? Yeah. Life is good? Life is always good. How's how this book come about here? I know that you've been interested in, in children's books for quite some time, and and uh, this is your second book now. Yeah. So how how did you get into children's books in general? Martins? Well, I've always wanted to make um, content. So like, as for me, it's always like I grew up watching Disney and you know Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network, and I always loved the people who told stories for the majority, you know, there's one thing about telling stories at home, but then when you could tell stories to everyone in the world, mm -hmm. those are the best, those are the best ones. So one of my ultimate goals were to, was to be able to tell those stories to kids all over the world. And um, I like children's content because to me, it brings families together. Yes. So like a kid can't just go see the minions by themselves, right? A family has to, you know, mom, dad, or someone has to take them. So that's why I always loved children's content. So like a bedtime story, like, a parent has to read it to the kid. You don't just be like, here you go, you five-year-old kid. Go, good luck. Put yourself, bed, Put yourself to bed. Put yourself right? to bed. So I always love children's books because the idea of like someone sitting down and reading to the children, that interaction is an important one. So that's why I, I, most of the stuff I do is, is in the children's content space. And the AJ is your daughter? AJ is based on my daughter, and that's mainly because when she was born, and you really don't think about these things until you have your own kid. Right. When she was born... You know, trying to get children's books with characters that look like her, mm -hmm. there's not very many, you know? And then you start looking at it, it's like, man, there's this huge gap of representation for children of color to be able to have books or characters that look like them that wasn't focused on their color. It's just, just like really cool kids of color going on adventures, you know? So, and then you start watching all the content that's on television, right. whether it's like, like I was telling somebody yesterday, like in um, Frozen, there's not one black kid in Frozen, right? Arendelle is just Whitetopia, right? <laughs> By the way, that's the, that's the sequel of Frozen, White Whitetopia. White, White you just nailed it. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, and then you watch all these shows, so, and then think about going back to when I was growing up, I had the same experience, so I felt like everyone else already had their chance to create the content to do so, so if they weren't going to do it, then I might as well be the one to do it. How has it been received, Martellus? So I, been, I mean, it's been pretty cool. Like, people love it. It's still, like, building the... Because once you... The thing about children's con, um, characters is um, familiarity is a big thing. So it's, like, the more that you make and the more they get to see them, then the bigger it grows. Because until then, like, AJ has to compete with, like, Door to Explore, you know, and Doc McStuffins. So if you see AJ on the shelf and you see Doc McStuffins and with the children's the way it is, there's so much... The way it's marketed, there's so much of it that you're always going to choose Doc McStuffins before you get his new character a chance. And you can pre-order it on Amazon right now because it's it's coming out next Tuesday, right? You, yes. So you can pre-order on all sorts of ways online right now, and you can always get Hey AJ, it's Saturday uh, right now because that was released in 2016. Yeah, the, and I make interactive children book apps. So like the first app is free. The Hey AJ Saturday app is free. Mm -hmm online, I mean, on Apple Store and stuff, and then mm -hmm. a new app comes out on the 27th as well. That's fantastic. Thank you. So uh, what are you hoping to create with the Imagination Agency, Martellus? Me, trying to be like the Black Walt Disney, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 so, like, fantastic. I, I mean, I would, I would love, like, I'm fascinated by theme parks. I would love to have a theme park that you could go to. Like, I would love to have blockbuster films, films that your children, that this these children now will want to show their children in the in the in the future as well. So it's just like I want to be able to create the stories that could take people places that they could only go through my mind, right? So I'm wondering what you thought of Black Panther then. I mean that that had to be something when you saw the popularity of that. Yeah, you got um, that. That's kind of what you're playing into right now. That there's not a lot of superhero characters on the screen, large or small, for people of color to say, well, that's that's me right there. Yeah, I mean that's the that's one of the big things. Like, and it's, a lot of it's because Hollywood doesn't think it's going to do well, but the movie like Black P Panther doing well opens up so many doors for other black creators and black content as well. Um, 
Um, the thing about Black Panther is like when you're a kid, you can't really read that comic when you're five, six, seven, eight years old. That's right. like when you're 12 to 13. Sure. I just think 12 years of not seeing yourself as a superhero is way too long. I, I think kids should be introduced to the possibility of them being superheroes from the moment they're born, right? Because mm -hmm. it, it comes into your mind and subconsciously you start thinking that I too can be super. But until then, you feel like you're the sidekick because most of the black kids are put into the sidekick role, what I call the sidekick syndrome. And so they always think, oh, like it's always set up where like a white kid can have a black friend, but a black kid can't have a white friend the way the media portrays them into the way they play on most movies and, and most content. So Black Panther is really good because, you know, it was like it was like one black one white guy in a in a movie. I don't know if anyone, everyone's seen the movie, but there's one white guy in the Spoiler movie. Spoiler alert, there's one white guy in Black yeah. Panther. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Now you just ruined it for everybody, Marcellus. Yeah, but he I mean Black I thought Black Panther was good. I thought I thought it I mean, for what it was, I thought it was a good movie. Mm -hmm. Martin yeah. Freeman was was the, was that guy? He's the one white guy. Okay, yeah. very good. There you go. And he said he ended up being, and I thought the one thing I didn't like if you didn't see the movie was that um, the fight scene towards the end. Have you seen it? I have not yet, no. I'm not going to tell you then. Yeah, yeah, it's don't. okay, just tell yeah. him. No, it's good. It's all right. Well, I mean, Who you, are you? How do you not have seen I Black have, Panther? I, I, Martellus, uh, <laughs> how, old are you, how old is AJ? And, She's four. And is she your only kid? That I know of. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, I'm just messing with you. No, nah, she's my only. <laughs> she's my only one. I've got three small children. My wife and I, we were we were planning on going out last Friday, but then yeah. we just, you know, it's hard because you couldn't take the kids to see that movie. Well, they, I, they my nine year old and seven year old say that a lot of their friends have seen it and yeah. they they want to see it. Is it fine for a nine and seven year old? I to think see a nine, it? it depends on. I me. Mean, he ran out of Star Wars, saying, "I'll see it in thirteen when I'm thirteen. Not Star the, Wars? not the original, the the latest, uh, the latest one. I don't like what they're doing with the new Star Wars movies. You know? It's just the stories are just. Thank mean. you. You don't? No. You agree with him? I totally agree. I, it's the Disneyfication of Star Wars, and it's not great. No, I didn't. I didn't think it was that great. Right. So, Martellus Bennett here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, let me talk some football with you. Uh, what's sure. your What's your plan right now as you're sitting here? In right March? now, I'm just you know just living life and trying to figure out what I want to do next. Is it to continue to play? Is it to explore other options? What is it that I want to do? You know, and I think it's like after ten years, you take a set your toll on your body, not only on your body, but mentally. So it's just like, where am I in a, in a mental capacity over, overall? Is it something that I want to continue to do or not want to do? I don't, I don't have to play, you know, like, but if I do, like I play football because it's fun. I like, I enjoy stiff arming people right? and jumping mm -hmm. over people and competing with my friends and things like that. So right now I'm just, you know, just work. I've been working out, preparing to play, um, be ready so you don't have to get ready, but I don't know if I'm going to or not. Could you take that sort of um, veteran path of, Wait till the summer. Maybe avoid a couple days of training camp since you've already been through all that. Is that, def, the, is that yeah. the path? Hell yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's the path. I mean, because now, I mean, there's, there's only so many offenses in the in the NFL, right? So, right. I mean, learning an offense now is one of the easiest things because you you know how to crack the codes. I played with seven different offensive coordinators or something like that. So there's mm -hmm. only so much you could do. So it's West Coast, and then there's everything else. <laughs> Did you see what they paid Jimmy Graham up in Green Bay? No, I don't. I don't watch TV. You just kids TV. I only watch cartoons. And do you uh, want to? Do you want to know what they paid him up in Green Bay? It ain't my money. I don't care. Thirty million bucks. Nice. I'm glad he got paid. That helps you. Don't help me at all. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it raises the amount of of the tight end market, right? Oh, I think yeah. Uh, so I'm I mean, saying sort of like you know, if somebody gets a sells their house in your neighborhood for a nice chunk of change, it oh helps yeah, your, yeah, I think it helps it, your neighborhood. I think it's always good. I mean, um, when guys get paid, I think everybody should get paid. I wish you got forty million. You know, right? It's like I want everybody to get paid. That's why you said it's not your money. I mean, yeah, it's not going in my pocket. Like I ain't gonna pay anything for my family, so I really don't really care what guys get paid. <laughs> so, uh, Martellus Benny here on the Rich Eisen Show. We did notice because uh, you know I follow you on Twitter. Um, did notice you tweeting out uh, once you did uh, at you in New England parted ways. Did you get grief from people about your your? you're no longer being employed in New England? Because we saw all the tweets of you saying to people, that, you know, hey, we're all human beings as athletes. I mean, we noticed that. No, it wasn't me. It was like other guys. Like, I don't, what, you, what anyone says to me has no – like, again, I can't go to the bank with someone else's thoughts of me, right? I can't sure. be like, hey, this is what they think of me. You should do this. Like, it, it's no – like, I have no moral bank for other people's pro projections onto me and, my, and myself as a person. So mm – -hmm. But I see other guys, like I, guys tweeting and retweeting things, and um, it just, it like, it bothers me sometimes because guys are humans. Like, guys get cut, guys get traded. 
Um, one of the worst things about trade, like you getting traded, you have no say so in your what's going to happen to you. They right. could trade you. They're just looking for the highest bidder, what's the best for their team. They don't care what's best for you as a human being. They're just trying to put you where they could get something in return for a body, right? So I think a lot of times fans miss the concept that these guys have families, right? And they have to up and move. Like most people don't want to deal with change. These guys have to fear change every single day because no one's safe. You could be just signed a contract like Alec Ogle, like Alex Ogletree did, mm -hmm. big contract, and then the next year you set, you getting a home in L.A., we're moving here, I've been a part of this franchise, and then next thing you know, you got to up and move to New York. And then once you start having families, that's some hard to do. Mm -hmm. Can I say that on here? Uh, well, no, and not twice, okay. but that's okay. <laughs> 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 it's okay. No, it's all good. Please. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely fine. Yeah. I can't say it. That's okay. But no, no, keep. Uh, but you're 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 absolutely right. You're absolutely right that somebody sits here in Los Angeles and then they have to now suddenly go to New York, right? And yeah. then and then and then here's what I like to do. I'd like to take a break, uh, come back, spend one more segment with you here because uh, I want to talk about uh, you know obviously your brother going to Philadelphia and the grief that Richard Sherman has gotten for oh, going yeah. to San Francisco when when it was Seattle that yeah. said, we're done here. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I don't understand it. So I, I do want to continue this conversation okay. in a second here, uh, especially since also our alma maters are going at it in the Sweet 16. Are they? You don't I, know? You really? I mean, really? I, if if, if, if really? someone doesn't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm, re so here's the thing. I'm so glad because, again, I've, I've, you know, I've really enjoyed watching you play and how you and your brother uh, go about your business. So I'm glad you're here for that. I'm glad we're talking about your books, and I'm glad just to get you out, to yeah, get I, on the show so we could tell you what's going on in the world, Martellus. I know. I, I'm appreciate. I read books. I read a lot of books. Okay, we'll hit that next. <laughs> with Toys R Us is closing. Like so Did much you know is Toys happening. Us is yeah, closed? I went there and I thought I was gonna get. A, there was gonna be a sale. My daughter's birthday was recently, yeah. and I, I thought there was gonna be a sale. There was no sale. There's no. There's discount. no store. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, there was no discount. I feel like they liquidate oh. and everything. <laughs> They're liquidating everything. I was like, let's go there to go get right. her gifts. And we'll get 50% off to 75% off. They need to get rid of everything. Take this, take this. We went and everything was full price. I was like, we either got here too early. You know, it's like you want to go, like you go by some people's house and they don't want to sell anything in the house and then they die and everything's for sale. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's just like. <laughs> Maybe that's why Tours R Us is going out of business. Yeah, I, I, I mean. They could have had some Bennett dollars. Yeah, it's hard to sell, like. Toys, like if you think about toys, I know we got to go to the thing, even Jigga, but you think about toys, you got to build a place of wonder, right? I think Toys R Us just become, became a department store. So it used to be fun to go in there and explore and play yeah. with the toys and yeah. things like that, but yeah. now you have to change your experience because now you can just do it on Amazon, right? I have had to go there and I could get the toy tomorrow. Like the Amazon, you order something on Amazon and then it's like, ding dong, you're like, what? I just ordered that 30 <laughs> seconds ago and here it is right there on my doorstep. How do you do it, Jeff Bezos, right? You know, so it's like, uh, so I think they just didn't curate an experience yeah. for kids to enjoy. Like, you know, so it's just weird. So we'll be back with Martell <laughs> with Marty Soros Rex, as he's known on Twitter at a moment, with Scott Hamilton right behind him. Again, check out uh, Hey AJ, It's Bedtime, a new children's book from the creator director of Awesomeness from the Imagination Agency, Martellus Bennett. It is available right now online. You can also get the children's app uh, associated with it uh, online. The same thing is already available for Hey AJ, It's Saturday, a book and app that was released just a couple of years ago. A couple more minutes left with uh, Martellus Bennett here before Scott Hamilton joins us in studio. Uh, your brother is now in Philadelphia. There was a lot of, uh, I don't know, because you say you're, you you don't listen to TV or watch it much. A lot of talk about that your brother was part of the release with him and Sherman. Sherman released your brother traded because Seattle didn't want guys who were speaking on social issues as much anymore. Would you agree with that assessment? I think that's a, I think it comes into a play with it. I think a lot of teams are afraid of guys who have voices, especially when they're strong advocates. But I just think it's really backwards, you know, if you have these guys because a lot of times they only look at, them as, look at them as players, but not as people. And you think about social injustice, when we're done playing, before we started playing, after we're done playing, we're still gonna be black in America, right? I was black before I started playing football. Like being an athlete doesn't make me not black. I'm not OJ, you know what I'm saying? I'm not black, I'm OJ, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. that's, not who, that's not who we are. So it's like, <laughs> these are things that affect our lives. Like, I still get pulled over for driving while black, you know what I'm saying? Because I be in the bins, I don't tint the windows, you know what I'm saying? Because I want them to be able to... 
<laughs> you know, but right. it's a real it's a real thing. Like if there's like sometimes listen to a rap song and there's sirens in a rap song, you get you start to panic and then when you do get pulled over, you you're afraid of you're afraid for your life. So if you have a platform, because we're not the only people that feel like this, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone else in our community feels like this. So if you have a platform to speak out on these things, I think it's your responsibility to do so. And and for teams, they're okay with guys going out there and promote anything. Like, you know, if you want to go promote, you know, if you're selling condoms, like they're happy. Oh, yeah, if you're selling a product, it's fine. But if you're selling hope and you're selling, you know, peace, it's not the things that we want you to prove. We don't want you to use our platform for those, those things. You don't get to do that here. If you want to go sell Nikes, Adidas, stand on that platform and sell wherever you want to sell. But, like, if you go out there and sell... Um, the idea that there's injustice for people and the mass majority of the, your team are people who have to deal with these situations. I just think it's just ridiculous for teams to act like it's not a real thing. But in terms of your brother leaving, well, Philadelphia has been a place that's got, it's chock full of, of socially conscious players, but so does Seattle too. Did you think that, that this played a role at all? I mean, I don't know. I think it's, I think what happened in Seattle, I think it was one of those things where, a lot of the guys have been there. They became bigger than the Seahawks, right? Because that's the team that had the most superstars out of any team in the, like the last ten years. The whole you look at the defense, you turn around as Earl, as Cam, as um, Richard, Sherman, Richard, my Bobby brother Wagner. Bobby Wagner. These are guys that are massive faces. They're all superstars. Like there's not a lot of teams where you get that many superstars in mm -hmm. on one side of the ball like that anymore. So. I think a lot of it was like they had a lot of hangover and those guys were, you know, they needed change. And mm -hmm. I think the, the the younger players on the team looks up to those guys, right? So they're not really worried about what these guys are doing. They worry about the guys they're trying to groom to be the next generation of players because they all respect these guys and they are the voice of the team. So I think the coaches want their voice back. So you got to get rid of those other voices as well. Well, thanks for bringing your voice to this show. Uh, come back anytime. Please, oh, Martellus, you're Thank welcome you. here absolutely anytime. The Imagination Agency, uh, the second book from Martellus Bennett. Again, Hey AJ, It's Bedtime. Check out Hey AJ, It's Saturday as well. Go online and check out the apps uh, as well. And at Marty Soros Rex on Twitter. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.